Hey guys, Lou here from LT's Custom Woodworks. Welcome to the shop. Today, another day, another dollar, another dollar spent. I got the weirdest request that I've ever had in this shop, ever. It, it threw me off for a loop a little bit there because it's just, try to comprehend that. I don't know if he was joking with me or was he serious or was he not? Um, it's very odd and I'm going to take you a little bit back to the, tell you a little bit about it first before I get into it. But it's, it, what this is, is it's a kitchen island build. So basically upper class neighborhood, um, uh, clean homes, nice homes. This home here is, I think it's around 17, 1800 square feet, give or take in around that vicinity. 1600 square feet beautiful home uh, you walk into the side door you got the kitchen off to the right you have a uh, dining room you got the living room off to that open concept cathedral ceilings very nice home he redid the bathroom upstairs he's doing the bathroom downstairs he redid the floors in the kitchen he did the floors in the dining room and living room now he wants an island built for his kitchen. So I, when I went to go take a look at it, the island is going to be five feet long, 24 inches deep, standard uh, island with an overhang. He wants to put, um, he, it's butcher block countertop, and then he wants to put some stools on the front. So normally the kitchen island would be that way. His request is he wants the kitchen island to be five feet long now in the in his kitchen he's got an l-shaped wall at the very corner of his kitchen which one side sticks out 14 inches the other side sticks out um 15 and a quarter i believe it is 15 and a half i got to take a look at my measurements so the corner of the cabinet he wants me to notch into that wall which is four and a quarter inches on each side that way, when you're standing on the outside, because he redid the floors there, he stopped it at the end of that wall. He doesn't want to see the kitchen floor. So he wants me to notch the corner of that one side of the cabinet to tuck right inside there. And then have the, the uh, countertop, which is going to have an overhang. Now you would assume that the overhang would be on the outside of the kitchen. He says he doesn't want that because his dining room table is there. So he wanted it on the inside, which that's what threw me off for a loop. Now, I don't know if he was joking at first, so I was kind of like confused, but he was actually serious. So the way it works is he's got, he wants a smaller cabinet on one side, bigger cabinet on the other side, two doors that open on one side, two doors that open on the other side, and then on the top, he wants four drawers that pull out. The overhang, he wants it to be on the inside of the kitchen where the cupboards are. Now, theoretically, when you look at that, when you open the drawer and you got a 10 inch overhang, eight to 10 inches, some of them can be 12. When you open that cupboard, you got an overhang there. How are you supposed to get your hand inside the drawer? It, that, that's what threw me off the loop. He goes, I'll, I'll manage. He was dead serious on having it that way. Now, then he gives me these door handles to match the kitchen cabinet. Now the door handles that I have, they're old, they're rusted, they're, there would be these ones, the brass looking ones. You got the door handles that kind of all worn out can I paint these? You know, he wants it to match the same style what he has in his kitchen cupboards now. That's what I can't do much with these, but I'll see what I can do. So you got a new island that you're going to have a hard time getting into your drawers. You got these old hardwares that you want me to put on. And the color is going to be, it's a oak. It's an old fashioned oak color. I will show you. He brought me a sample door from his bathroom cabinet, which is the same throughout the kitchen. 
I guess at the time of the year when the house was built. But this is the color here that we're going with. Same style doors. Um, other than that, that is what's throwing me off is the opening of the doors. Now, of course, signed and sealed, deposit given. We're going to build this. We're going to go with it. And then he is going to struggle with those cabinet doors that I think that are just not going to be fusible that well. Why go through that? And, um, you know, once that countertop is cut, because now I got to notch that countertop around that L-shaped wall because he wants it to stick out past. Now, he's got a lot of room in that kitchen. He can move that in the middle of the kitchen if he wants. He doesn't want that. So I'm a little confused on this one, but hey, like I said, it's signed and sealed, deposit given. We're going to build this, and that's just the way it's going to be. So the interior is going to be in the malamine and then i'm gonna i'm gonna skirt it with a quarter inch oak all the way around it's gonna have a face frame which is three quarter inch oak the door is three quarter inch oak uh, so i got the uh, the sides are cut and the bottom is cut at 21 and a half inches i allowed for the face frame and the doors and that so it's 21 and a half by 35. My, uh, my kick plates cut out three by four inches and I got my piece over here. I'll bring the camera closer so you can see what I've done. Now on this side here, I made my notch. Now disregard this line here. I allowed for my backing and my quarter inch plywood. But this here is gonna be the, the cutout for it to countersink into the wall. I'm not gonna do this side. Uh, just the sheer fact that it's it's you know, the wall is coming out to here. It's going to be this tiny little piece. It's not worth it. Let the countertop butt up against the wall. You're going to see that flooring on this side a little bit, but that's okay. This is the bigger side. This is, he wants this cut out for sure. I'm going to do it that way and let the countertop hang over a little bit. Now on this side here, I'm just going to cut this out. Then there's backing on this, backing on this, and then we can start to assemble. I've cut out my notch. I've got my board cut here. That is five and a half by 57 and a quarter, I believe. Double check here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to 57 and a quarter long. I'm gonna drill some pocket holes so I can attach this at the top runner and then we can uh, start assembling. So I'll drill some pocket holes on this and get everything ready. I'm just going to put two on each end and that should be good to go. Now I had to elevate it this side for the sheer fact that there was a cut out there and this back gets cut out because of that. So that's why we had to do that. Now we're moving on to this side. Same thing here. I cut this top piece the same as the front. It's just a little bit smaller. I cut it four inches by 57 and a quarter. I'm just going to pin some uh, some pins on each side. And then I'll pre-drill and screw it into place.
I got I just found this laying around it's two feet long I'm gonna use this as a spacer I'll push it I'll clamp this down I'll push this up against I'll run a couple of pins and I will screw it from underneath the back and the top and then again that is getting all wrapped with oak so you're not gonna see the screws Okay, so I got some quarter inch oak. Now it's cut a little bit bigger at the top. I'm gonna to take a flush trim bit on the router and I will go all the way around and just cut it even. I will glue this on and I will put a couple of pins here and there. Even though this is being tucked into the corner, I'm not gonna put a panel on this because you're not gonna see this. This here, I don't think you need it either because I left enough room, but I'm gonna put it just in case. Okay, so I took the time to cut all the pieces for the face frame. The top and the sides, I made them an inch and a half, and I made them a little bit proud because I'll just take a router with a flush trim bit and trim the sides. This middle piece, I had to go a little bit wider because of the hinges that I'm using. So this is cut at uh, two and a half inches. I've made all my marks for my dominoes. And this bottom piece is cut at three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna take this all apart. I'm gonna sand it down. I'm gonna soften up the edges a little bit. And then I'll start to cut for the drawers, the face frame part for the drawers. And that, I'm just gonna pocket hole screw from behind and that should be uh, good to rock and roll. From there, I will glue and pin this in place. Now you can, you can pocket hole screw these. This time I chose not to. Okay, now that this is dried, I got a six inch piece. Instead of going with four drawers, I'm just gonna make one big one. The four drawers, it, it's not gonna work. It's too small. So I'm just gonna go one big one here and one big one there. And I already talked to him about that. So now I'm just gonna drive my pocket hole screw, inch and a quarter. Okay, I'm ready for glue up. So I'm just gonna spread out. I'm not gonna put a lot of glue, but I will put a little bit. And I will go all the way around the perimeter. And then I'll pin it in place.
I'm going to start setting up my my drawer slides. So what I did was I took my square here and I just measured the distance. I cut the pieces to length. I'm just going to rip it down a little bit, a sixteenth of an inch, and then I have a nailer plate for my uh, my drawer slides. I just set up my drawer slide jig and I'm using that to mount my filler piece. I am putting a spacer on top. I'll pre-drill four holes. This will sit on top and I'll screw that right into place. Then my drawer slide can screw onto that filler piece. So I'm gonna pre-drill these holes now before I secure this in place. Okay, so what I've done, because we got this jog out on this side of the cabinet, the small cabinet, I couldn't go with the longer drawer slides. I had to get the 18 inch. So I got my filler pieces, the same as this side. I'm gonna be starting on these drawers here. So I've, I've cut the, I'm gonna go with the malamine skirting of the drawer but the bottom, I'm gonna use quarter inch plywood. I just want it for strength. The malamine, that we're out of the quarter inch, can't find any in the city. You can get the eighth of an inch handy panel. To me, it's too thin. I don't like using that for the bottom. So I'm gonna use three quarter inch. The same oak I used on the side is what I'm gonna use for the bottom. And the sides, I cut them already, pre-cut them at five and a half inches. I'll cut a dado in them, slide that panel in and uh, screw them up. Now that I have all my boards cut, my dados cut in to fit a quarter inch panel, I'm going to edge band the top. I'm gonna to do that now before I assemble together because it's a lot easier if we do it that way. And it's the same process as always. I always use a file to cut it down. I cut it a little extra longer. Now this has got the uh, self-adhesive on the back. Now you gotta be careful that you don't overheat this because when you do, you you take away the effect of the glue in behind. So overheating it is not good. Now you use the corner of my file and just cut the excess off. Then I'll take my sandpaper and I'll just sand the edge at a five degree angle. To get that nice finish on the edge. Now I will even sand the top down just to clean up whatever marks the iron made. I'm gonna run some pins just to hold it in place. And then I'll pre-drill and screw the pieces on.
Now I made this a quarter inch smaller. For the, the reason for that is because I slide the panel right into the slot, drive three screws on the back side. If this panel ever gets damaged, I just gotta undo these three screws, slide the panel out and slide a new panel in. Of course, the face front will have to come off uh, for me to do that, but at least I don't have to take the whole drawer and make a whole new drawer again. I got my jigs in place. My drawer slides right to the end. I'll drive a screw on each side and I'll pull it out even more. I'll put three screws per side. Perfect. That pretty much wraps it up for this video, for this episode. There'll be a second part on the drawer fronts, the doors, the finishing, the staining, and the um, uh, the butcher block top as well. So I'll wrap it up here. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a video. And I'll see you guys on the next episode.